the screen clear so that we can start the session now. Let me just check. Okay, so yes. Okay, my dear aspirants, so uh, we will start with the MCQ session of clinical anatomy quiz targeting the NEET PG 2022 examination. So myself, Dr. Mona Lisa, I have done my MD anatomy from Armed Force Medical College, Pune. And I am here to discuss uh, the clinical MCQs related to the topic of, uh, which is important for targeting the NEET PG 2022 examination. So before starting the session, meanwhile, the students will also join uh, so Adhikari, good evening Adhikari dear. So interactive sessions, so special free sessions on the Anakanvi platform is an interactive session. Polls are conducted, raise your hands, never ever miss a session. So you start following the educator on the Anakanvi app and thereafter you get the notification regarding the session. After completion of the session, you can also download the PDF notes anytime, anywhere, read from the top educators of Anakanvi platform. So these are the benefits can be availed by you. So just grab this opportunity. This is highly beneficial for you. I also want to talk about the plus subscription of Un Academy where all 19 subjects are completed in a very systematic way. You can assess both the live and the recorded version. You can study from India's top educators from the medical stream and you can compete in live tests and quizzes. Anytime, anywhere, read from the top educators of Un Academy platform, assess more than 25,000 MCQs made by the uh, educators who had got an experience of more than 8 to 10 years and also a explanation is given for each and every clinical MCQ. So these clinical MCQs which is from all 19 subjects is high yield MCQs and this is based on the latest pattern of examination. So latest pattern of examination is kept kept in mind while uh, making these MCQs. So you should have an access to all these MCQs only when you will take the plus subscription. Also, if you are going to take the subscription of one uh, year or more, you are getting the printed notes of An Academy. I would also like to tell about the iconic subscription where the merging of prep ladder and An Academy has been done. That means you are going to study from the uh, best two of the platforms uh, educator. Clinical integrated essentials video lectures from the dream team QBank 3 can be assessed. Uh, rapid revision snapshots and treasure deep notes of the dream notes of 2021. So all these benefits can be availed by you if you go for iconic subscription. Let's talk about NEET PG subscription and the iconic subscription comparison. So this slide is showing you the comparison of NEET PG and iconic subscription. And you can use my code and add 10 for getting an extra discount of 10%. So this is the opportunity which should be availed by you. I would also like to tell study with me anatomy series. So my dear aspirants, anatomy test which is going to happen on 21st January. The timing is 9 p.m. Okay, the timing is 9 p.m. The um, students getting rank 1 will get 5,000 Amazon vouchers, 3,000 and 2,000 Amazon vouchers like this. So all of you do participate in this anatomy MCQs which is made by me. And what I want that you should enroll in this MCQ test by using the code ANAT10. So use this code ANAT10 and do present for this anatomy test. Now, before starting this session, I would also like to congratulate, I would also like to congratulate the toppers of FMG December session 2021. So I would give all the blessings to them. They have, uh, they have got a very nice marks and uh, I would uh, uh, congratulate them and I want them to compete their NEET PG examination in the first attempt. Also, I want to uh, update you about the updated high effective and clinical MCQs of 25,000 high yield clinical MCQs based on latest pattern, which is also including a detailed explanation for each and every MCQs. You can have an access to these MCQs if you are want to take the subscription, go for it. Use the code and add 10 and get extra 10% discount. Boost your medical preparation and uh, have this, um, uh, uh, this uh, validity of uh, discounts and use the code and add 10 for additional 10% discount. 
Now, I also want to uh, show this slide which is showing you the upcoming sessions of targeting NEET PG 22 MCQ discussion batch. So, uh, any of this batch in which you want to enroll, use the code and add 10 and get enrolled and get an extra discount of 10%. So, these are the batches, Focus, Focus FMG batch 2022. So, just uh, be present for this batches, all the best. So, my dear Aspen, let's start with the MCQ session now. So, let's start with the MCQ session now. Let's start with the first MCQ. So I would like to read the MCQ for you. So yes, a 52 year old man with a long history of alcoholic cirrhosis complained of severe dysphagia and retrosternal burning pain. Retrosternal burning pain. During esophagoscopy which is done, the endoscope advance the endoscope until its tip reaches the esophageal hiatus to that of the diaphragm. So which of the following vertebral level did the tip of endoscope must have likely ended? So yes, what is your answer? The hint is given, the clinical scenario is given and you have to tell me which is the vertebral level for this esophageal hiatus through which uh, in the diaphragm through which the surgeon has to approach or the endoscope has to approach. Your time starts now. So yes, Adhikari and everyone, those who want to give the answer. So Trupti has given C as the correct answer. What about others? What about others? So my dear aspirants, Trupti, Trupti is absolutely correct. T, so thoracic level 10 is absolutely correct answer. Actually, the hint which is provided is so all the alcoholic cirrhosis and complaints and clinical history is provided and the endoscopist want to uh, introduce the endoscope in the esophageal hiatus as you can see Saini Devnath absolutely right so vertebral level we have to know where the endoscope has reached the correct level is 10th thoracic vertebra T10 and we know that uh, esophageal opening ka level T10 hota hai esophageal opening ka level T10 hai Inferior vena cava opening ka level T8 and the abdominal aorta or the aorta opening level is at the le uh, level of T12. Okay, these are the openings which is lying in the diaphragm. Let me show you this diagram. So you can see here as we know the thoracic cavity is separated from that of the abdominal cavity with the presence of this is what this is the diaphragm now structures from the thoracic cavity has to go inside the, the abdominal cavity so they has to traverse through the diaphragm so you can clearly see the level of inferior vena cava is corresponding to t8 level the level of uh, esophagus is corresponding to the level of t10 and the level of inferior vena cava as is also seen and the level of abdominal aorta or the aorta is corresponding to the level of T12. So T12, these are the levels which has to be, these are the major openings on the diaphragm and you have to know this level. Now my dear aspirants, before proceeding to the next MCQ, I would like to show you this diagram where you can see the important openings of the diaphragm and the structures traversing. So there is one anterior opening and through this anterior opening that is called as foramen of morgagni or the space of larry. What is foramen of morgagni or the space of larry? This is the opening which is residing between the sternal ziphoid process. From the ziphoid process of the posterior aspect of the sternum, the diaphragm originates along with the seventh costal cartilage. So the space which is lying between the ziphoid process origin and that of seventh costal cartilage, that space is called as foramen of morgagni or larry and the structures traversing through this space is internal thoracic artery vein and superior epigastric vessel branch of internal thoracic artery and vein that is the superior epigastric vessels now let's talk about the next one that is uh, the esophageal hiatus which is lying at the level of t10 and through esophageal hiatus the structures traversing or passing is following following structures passes the structures traversing is as the name suggests so if you can also enlarge i can also enlarge this diagram for you yeah so see here now, so the structures traversing through this uh, opening is esophagus, anterior posterior vagal trunk, branch of left phrenic, esophageal branch of left gastric and esophageal tributary of left gastric vein. Now, if we talk about the third important opening, that uh, opening is ab as the aortic hiatus 
and through the aortic hiatus the structures traversing the structures passing posterior to the diaphragm and the important structure we know that the level is t12 and important structures traversing are the aorta the ajagus vein thoracic duct and the plexus surrounding the aorta okay now some of the minor openings the minor openings like greater and lesser splanchnic nerves and the least splanchnic nerve piercing the two crudas right in the left crudas of the diaphragm and also we have got one of the important opening that opening is called as the vena cava opening through which right phrenic nerve and inferior vena cava is passing right phrenic nerve and inferior vena cava is passing so in short we have discussed the important diaphragmatic opening let's move on to the second mcq a question number second a 63 year old man with a history of alcoholism is brought to the emergency department with vomiting of blood the complaint is hematemesis that is vomiting of blood finding on the endoscopic examination suggest bleeding from esophageal varices okay the varices is most likely to be the result of anastomosis which is occurring between left gastric vein and which of the following vessels or vein so which is the correct answer the options are ajagal system of vein inferior vena cava left umbilical vein superior mesenteric vein or subcostal vein question number second mark the correct answer so your time starts now uh, adhikari saini kriti bhat mark the correct answer trupti which is the correct answer according to you then i will come up with the explanation your time starts now i will give you 30 seconds for each mcqs 30 seconds only so yes mulai uh, vedan is telling it's d okay mulai vedan is telling it's d what about others so what is the correct answer my dear aspirants please mark the correct answer okay kriti uh, bhat is telling b saini is telling a seema tiwari is telling d so mixed bundle of answer has arrived and my dear aspirants the correct answer given by trupti okay so ajagus system of vein is the correct answer ajagus system of vein actually here the clinical scenario is directly telling that this is a case of esophageal varices that means it is a case of porto caval anastomosis okay porto caval anastomosis so here actually in this level the anastomosis occur between esophageal it occurs between esophageal branch of left gastric vein anastomosing with esophageal branch of ajagus vein that is ajagus vein okay so that means left gastric vein and ajagus vein is forming an anastomosing anastomosis among themselves yes saini devnath absolutely right a is the correct answer so actually i would like to show you a diagram for it now see here here in this diagram the important site of uh, uh of the porto caval anastomosis has been seen in the mcq what has been asked in the mcq it has been asked about esophageal varices now see here the source of caval and the portal anastomosis has been shown so it is between ajagus vein as you can see it is between ajagus vein and um, that of the left gastric vein so this is between ajagus vein and that of left gastric vein this was asked in the mcq so we have got ajagus vein as the correct answer the other site which is very important actually the three sites which has been shown in this diagram is very importantly asked in the mcq the second site is the hemorrhoids and hemorrhoid ke case mein anastomosis is formed portocaval anastomosis is between superior and inferior rectal vein so it is between superior and that of inferior rectal vein now let's talk about the third site which is at the level of para uh, umbilicus that is called as captus medusa so when we are talking about captus medusa 
in the level of captured medusa para amblyical vein of portal and the abdominal superficial vein of the abdominal wall these two structures are forming the anastomosis so this is the captured medusa which is uh, in the form of radiating vein which is seen around the umbilical so these are the three important source of portocaval anastomosis you have to know where it is formed and you have to also know the source of uh, the portal and caval veins so is it clear from the diagram so let's move on to the next that is question number 3 all the best so let's move on to question number 3 a 34 year old man is undergoing an emergency appendectomy after the appendectomy has been performed successfully the patient undergoes an exploratory laparoscopy which of the following anatomic features are the most useful feature to distinguish between jejunum and that of ileum options are jejunum has got thinner wall compared with that of ileum jejunum has got less mesenteric fat compared to that of ileum jejunum has got numerous vascular arcades compared to that of ileum jejunum has got numerous lymphatic follicles beneath the mucosa compared with that of ileum so my dear aspirants question number 3 mark the correct answer so these are the options provided and you have to mark the correct answer so your time starts now 30 seconds my dear aspirants 30 seconds according to you which is the most important feature to differentiate jejunum and ileum trupti trupti has given c as the answer what about others so your time begins now mark the correct answer kriti bhat b okay so mix bundle of answers are coming up mix bundle of answers are coming up okay saini devnath is telling d okay so i got d also i got b also i got a also and dr kastub is telling c so what to do mix bundle of answers are coming up which is the right one dear which is the right one okay okay the correct answer is given by question number 3 the correct answer is given by kriti kriti bhat jejunum has got less mesenteric fat than that of ileum the correct answer is jejunum has got less mesenteric fat with that of ileum so we have got b as the correct answer my dear aspirants b is the most correct answer okay jejunum has got thinner wall with that ileum is not correct it is not the case it is not having thinner wall jejunum has got more vascular arcades is absolutely wrong it is having less vascular arcades and jejunum has got more lymphatics it's absolutely wrong actually lymphatic aggregation is called as pierce patches and we have got numerous so there is presence of numerous pierce patches in the level of ileum so ileum or the distal most part of the ileum will have numerous pierce patches okay so we have got b as the correct answer where it is correct the peritoneal window or the fat content if you compare ileum and jejunum ileum has got less fat contained mesenteric fat as compared to that of uh, ileum so jejunum has got less fat as compared to that of the ileum now i would like to show you a numerous uh, uh, diagram so that your concepts get cleared so firstly see this uh, diagram where you can see the uh, the important features which is shown here so if you want i will slightly highlight this diagram enlarge this diagram so you can see the loop of jejunum and ileum what you can appreciate that pilica circularis so what is pilica circularis Pili so i want to show you all the difference of uh, jejunum and ileum so what do you mean by pilica let me just enlarge this diagram so what do you mean by pilica circularis so what do you mean by pilica circularis pilica circularis is mucosal fold mucosal folds and there is more of pilica circularis which is also called as valve of kerkering the other name of pilica circularis that is mucosal fold is called as valve of kerkering and it is more in case of jejunum it is more in case of jejunum and in case of um, ileum we have got less pilica circularis less pilica circularis but pierce patches what is pierce patches aggregation of lymphatic lymphatic aggregation so when we talk about lymphatic aggregation so pierce patches means lymphatic aggregation 
and there is more of lymphatic aggregation more of lymphatic aggregation in the ileum and it is most in the distal most part of the ileum now other than that in this diagram you can see the arterial arcades which arises from the source of superior mesenteric artery is one or two arterial arcades in case of jejunum but there is three to five that means more of arterial arcades in case of ileum so that means the fat content will be and also the fat content is less in case of jejunum and the fat content will be more in case of ileum so by this diagram you can have uh, all the difference seen in jejunum and ileum let's move on to the next one so i would like to show you more of this diagram so here also you can see the translucent area that means mm, the peritoneal window actually the other name is peritoneal window which is the space lying between the vasa recta which is arising from the arcades of superior mesenteric artery peritoneal window is more spacious you can say more spacious or more widely separated in case of jejunum loop and in this case vasa recta is very closely and arterial arcades are also 3 to 5 here the arcades are just 2 to 4 the arterial arcades in case of uh, jejunum is just 2 to 4 the arterial arcades in case of jejunum is just 2 1 or 2 or just 2 3 so there is more of fat in case of ileum now see here other diagram where you can see again i will highlight it you can see just one or two rows of arterial arcades peritoneal window is transparent because less fat in case of jejunum and peritoneal window is opaque because more fat in case of ileum arterial arcades is four to five pierce patches is maximum in case of ileum now my dear aspirants before moving on to the next mcq i would also like to uh, just what i have explained a table has been formed so that you can revise the difference of jejunum and ileum loop so can i highlight this diagram so i am just enlarging this diagram so that you can have a better understanding of the difference between jejunum and ileum so see here the length if you compare the length it's a uh, if we will uh, actually proximal two fifth part of small intestine is the jejunum and distal part is ileum most of it uh, location is in the umbilical region it is in the hypogastric and pelvic region ileum color and trauma which is more vascular jejunum is more vascular as compared to ileum so jejunum is more vascular as compared to ileum this is an important point jejunum is more vascular now other than that walls are thicker and it is thinner in ileum villi is larger and numerous if you compare the uh, projections of the mucosa villi it is longer in case of jejunum and it is smaller in case of ileum also the circular mucus fold what is this circular mucus fold called as circular mucosal fold is called as valve of curcuring so valve of curcuring is larger and more closely set in case of jejunum as compared to that of ileum peers patches is more in case of and it is present in case of ileum other than that the difference of mesentery has also been shown here and the arterial arcades which we have seen here arterial arcades are one or two in case of jejunum it is three or six in case of ileum fat is less fat is more peritoneal window is seen clearly because less fat no peritoneal window in case of ileum vasa recta is longer and vasa recta are shorter and more numerous in case of ileum so the same thing you can appreciate in this diagram also so i think with such um, with such detailed explanation of difference of jejunum and ileum it is clear let's move on to the next that is question number fourth all the best to everyone let's move on to question number fourth yeah a 45 year old woman is admitted to the hospital with a difficulty of breathing radiological examination reveals a tumor invading the lung surface anterior to the hilum area which nerve is most likely compressed by the tumor to result in dyspnea so here the key point is the location radiological examination is showing the tumor is invading lung surface anterior aspect that is the hint which is provided to you and you have to give the right answer the options are phrenic nerve vagus nerve intercostal nerve recurrent laryngeal nerve cardiopulmonary so what is your answer my dear aspirants please mark the correct answer your time starts now
Question number four, mark the correct answer. Okay, A, phrenic nerve is the correct answer. So, Kriti has given the right answer and absolutely right, phrenic nerve is the correct answer. Actually, the key point which is provided is the lung surface, the tumor is invading the lung surface anterior to the hilum. So, my dear aspirants, here phrenic nerve is passing anterior, vagus nerve is passing posterior and intercostal nerve has not no relation with the, it is lying in the intercostal space. Recurrent laryngeal nerve as we know, right or left side, may be, we have they can, uh, we have already seen that recurrent laryngeal nerve on the left hand side is forming a loop around arch of aorta. But in the right hand side, it is related with the right subclavian artery. Cardiopulmonary plexus is also located deep to that of the uh, thorax region in the heart. So, the correct answer, the structure which is passing anterior to the structure which is passing anterior to the hilum and the relation, the structure is the phrenic nerve. So, A is perfectly correct answer, doctor official channel Raxmo, absolutely correct. So, see here, relations of phrenic nerve and that of vagus nerve if compared to the hilum region has been shown. So, what you can appreciate here that right vagus nerve is medial to ajagus and it is passing posterior to hilum. Here, left vagus nerve is also passing posterior to the hilum. But, if you will see the phrenic nerve in both the side, right and the left side, it is passing anterior to the lung hilum. So, you can clearly mention this relation that phrenic nerve is passing anterior to each hilum and it is located over the pericardium, running over the pericardium. So, that is the reason that we have got phrenic nerve as the right answer. So, done. So, let us move on to the next, that is question number fifth. Let us move on to question number fifth. A 35 year old woman who was brought to the emergency department after a drug overdose requires insertion of nasogastric tube and administration of activated charcoal. What are the sites in the esophagus where one should anticipate resistance due to compression of the structures related at that point? We have got four, five options where the constriction site has been shown to you. You just tell me which is the correct. So, option A is aortic arch, cricopharyngeal constriction, diaphragmatic constriction. Option B, uh, cardiac constriction, cricoid constrictions or thoracic duct. Option C, pulmonary constriction, cricothyroid constriction, a gigas vein. Option D, cardiac constriction, a gigas vein and pulmonary trunk. Option E, cricopharyngeal constriction, cricothyroid or thymus gland. So, please read all the options nicely. Take 30 seconds and then provide me the correct answer. Your time begins now. Mark the correct answer. So, all of you take your time. Mark the correct answer. Question number fifth. So, I got an answer from Saini Devnath. What about others? Saini Devnath has given the answer. Kriti Bhatt has also given the answer. Kriti Bhatt. Okay, so I got uh, answer from Saba. Mixed bundle of answers are coming up now. A, A and then E. Okay. So, Mulai has given, uh, Trupti has given. So, most of you are giving A as the correct answer. So, let me come up with the explanation. The correct answer is A. Okay. My dear aspirants, we have to know this is a clinical MCQ which is targeting about the constrictions of the esophagus. So, in case of esophagus, we have got how many constrictions? Total, we have got four constrictions level in the esophagus. The four constriction levels are Junction of the pharynx and the esophagus that is called as pharyngo esophageal junction. So, pharyngo esophageal junction is also called as cricopharyngeal junction. So, cricopharyngeal junction and pharyngo esophageal junction are similar thing. Why? Because actually the, uh, the pharynx level and the esophagus is corresponding to C6 cervical vertebra. So, that is also called as cricopharyngeal constriction. So, we can also uh, call this cricopharyngeal constriction. The other constriction is at the 
left principal bronchus left main or principal bronchus is the constriction level the other is arch of aorta and the fourth constriction is when it crosses the diaphragmatic opening of the esophageal diaphragmatic means esophageal opening of the diaphragm so these are the fourth constrictions which is seen in case of uh, esophagus let me show a diagram which will help you to understand the similar thing so let me just show you the diagram so my dear aspens this is showing the sites of constrictions of the esophagus which has to be known for this mcq the first is pharyngoesophageal junction which is corresponding to the level of c6 cervical vertebra so it is also called as cricopharyngeal level or cricopharyngoesophageal level the that is approximately 6 inches from the incisor teeth arch of aorta is approximately 9 inches left principal bronchus this is the first constriction level this is the second this is the third left principal bronchus is corresponding to 11 inches from the distance of incisor teeth and the fourth constriction level is 15 inches which is corresponding to the opening of right crux of the diaphragm where lies the esophageal opening of the diaphragm thereafter at the level of t11 it continues with the uh, with the cardiac end with the um, cardiac end of the stomach so this is another diagram where you can see the arch of aorta is forming a constriction for esophagus very nicely if i enlarge it you can see the constriction is also formed by the junction where the principal bronchus is lying and also the right crux of diaphragm where the esophagus is lower down at the level t11 it get continued with the abdomen so the level is t10 level then we have got t4 and t6 level and we have got c6 level where the pharynx continue to become the esophagus so these are the levels of constriction vertebral level of constriction has also been shown in this diagram so let's move on to the next that is question number 6 question number 6 a 54 year old man is admitted to the emergency department with severe abdominal pain 54 year old man is admitted to emergency department with severe upper abdominal pain gastroscopy reveals a tumor in the antrum of the stomach a ct scan is ordered to evaluate the lymphatic drainage of the stomach which of the following lymph node is most likely to be involved in a malignancy of the stomach so options are celiac superior mesenteric inferior mesenteric lumbar and hepatic so again this is a direct clinical mcq you have to just know about the lymphatic drainage of the stomach and which would be the correct answer in this case question number 6 your time starts now mark the correct answer i got an answer from mulai vedan what about others So, what is the correct answer, dear? So, Kriti Bhatt has also given, and uh, Kostub, Doctor Kostub, Trupti. So, many answers, many answers, and celiac is absolutely correct answer. Celiac lymph node is absolutely correct answer. So, clearly, we have to evaluate the lymphatic drainage of the stomach, and the lymphatic drainage which will be involved in the stomach will be the celiac lymph node. So, see this diagram where you can see. the whole of the lymphatic drainage of the stomach is divided into four quadrants so this is the um, uh, so here you can see this is the first quadrant which you are seeing this is the uh, the quadrant which you are seeing and uh, here the from this area the drainage is to the left gastric and the area which is on to the greater sac upper part pancreato splenic lymph node lower part is right gastroepipolic pyloric part is from pyloric lymph node and what you can say ultimately these all lymphatics are draining into celiac lymph node so celiac lymph node is absolutely correct answer given many of you have given the right answer good very good let's move on to the next one a 22 year old man is thrown through a plate glass wall in a fight 
radiological examination reveals that the lateral border of his right scapula is shattered. He is admitted to the emergency department and physical examination reveals difficulty in laterally rotating his arm. Which of the following muscle is most probably injured? Which of the following muscles is most probably injured? The options are teres major, infraspinatus, latissimus dorsi, trapezius and supraspinatus. Question number 7th, mark the correct answer. Your time begins now. Okay, so doctor official channel has given an answer, Trupti has given, Kriti Bhatt has given the answer, Saini Devnath has given the answer. So my dear Ashwin, the correct one, Dr. Kostup has also given the answer. The correct answer for this MCQ is infraspinatus. So B is absolutely correct answer. Question number 7, B is absolutely correct answer. The person who is admitted to emergency department after physical examination difficulty is found with the, the difficulty which is seen in this case. So what is the difficulty which is appreciated in this case? The difficulty is found and revealing in lateral rotating of the arm. So that means this is an MCQ which is which is targeted for knowing the uh, knowing the action of the muscle. So here we have to know and we clearly know that infraspinatus muscle is causing lateral rotation of arm. So this is the reason it is the correct answer. So I will give you a brief about the action of all the muscles which is mentioned and I will also show the diagram where you can appreciate the location of these muscles. So see here, infraspinatus is the correct answer and the reason is that it is the muscle which, so actually two muscles, uh, one is not mentioned, the infraspinatus muscle and the other being teres minor muscle, both of these muscles are causing lateral rotation of arm. Teres major muscle is involved in adduction and medial rotation. It is causing adduction and medial rotation of arm. And the other latissimus dorsi which is a uh, back muscle which is responsible. The major action of latissimus dorsi it is also called as climbing muscle. It is also called as swimmer muscles. And the action involved is it is causing adduction, extension and medial rotation of the humerus. So basically it is causing adduction, extension and medial rotation of humerus. So these all muscles, so that is the reason all these options are wrong because none of this muscle is causing medial rotation. The other, uh, the lateral rotation, these muscles are causing medial rotation. The other options are, so before that I would like to show you this diagram in which you can appreciate exactly so you can see both the posterior and anterior view. Here you can see uh, this is the spine of the scapula. So this is a posterior view. This is the spine of the scapula. The muscle which is residing above the spine. So this is the spine of scapula. This is supraspinatus muscle. The muscle which is residing below the spine. This is infraspinatus muscle. Also we can see the part of, also we can appreciate the part of teres minor muscle here. This is teres minor muscle and when you will see the anterior aspect. So this is the anterior view. So here you can see the anterior view of the scapula where in the subscapular region the muscle which is shown is subscapularis. So together these are called as sits muscle which is called as rotator cuff muscle. And so here supraspinatus, infraspinatus and that of teres minor muscle. Uh, so these three, so subscapularis is the muscle which is inserting into lesser tubercle and supra, infra and teres minor is inserting together on the greater tubercle of the humerus, on the greater tubercle of the humerus, okay. Supraspinatus, infraspinatus and teres minor conjointly, as you can see in the diagram, conjointly they are inserting onto GT, greater tubercle of the humerus and subscapularis is inserting on LT that is lesser tubercle of the humerus. Now. Let's see the other one, other diagram. So I also want to show you the posterior view where a flat muscle, as you can see, which is also originating from the lower down, that is the, uh, that is the iliac crust and it is actually having a very uh, thin part when it is, uh, it is getting narrowed out when it is inserting, this is latissimus dorsi, inserting into the floor of inter tubercular sulcus or bicipital groove, intertubercular sulcus in between the pectoralis major and teres major muscle. And this is the trapezius muscle which is shown. These two muscles 
uh, as the muscles of the back. Now, other than that, I would also like to tell that trapezius muscle is actually causing elevation of the scapula and it also retreat the scapula during abduction so that the abduction is possible above horizontal level. So, it is causing abduction greater than 90 degree in along with the serratus anterior muscle. Along with which muscle? Serratus anterior muscle. The supraspinatus muscle is an important muscle. This supraspinatus muscle is causing initiation of abduction. Supraspinatus muscle, one of the muscle of, of the rotated cuff, its action is not lateral or medial rotation. It is involved in initiation moment of abduction. Got it? Let's move on to the next MCQ. So, before that, I would like to show you a diagram where you can appreciate on the posterior view, you can appreciate this is the spine of the scapula and here on the lateral border, two muscles are arised. So, lateral border, two muscles. So, on the lateral border, upper part of the scapula, teres minor because minor are always at the head of their parents. So, minor is above, major is below and teres major muscle, see here, it is going towards the humerus bone. It is so, teres minor we have already seen it is attaching to the greater tubercle of humerus along with infraspinatus and that of supraspinatus. Now, teres major muscle is attached onto the medial lip of intertubercular sulcus. So, is it okay? Can we move on to the next one? Can we move on to the next, mus uh, next MCQ everyone? So, let us move on to the next that is question number 8. A 75 year old man is scheduled for his routine annual medical examination. During echocardiographic examination, a large mobile structure resembling a thrombus is identified in the right atrium near the opening of inferior vena cava. After careful examination, the doctor identifies the doctor identifies large mobile structure as a normal component of the heart. So, which of the following structure could most likely resemble the thrombus in this location? Is the structure tricuspid valve, is the structure ustachian valve, is the structure thibetian valve, septum primum or fossa ovalis? So, my dear aspirant, take your time of 30 seconds and mark the correct answer. The key points has been mentioned here and the key points which is mentioned in this MCQ is The thrombus is lying in the right atrium near the opening of inferior venga cava. So, a large mobile structure which is a normal component of the heart at this level. So, you have to identify these are the key points which I have underlined and highlighted in this MCQ. So, with the help of these key points, tell me which is the correct answer. What would be the, uh, so which of the following structure most likely resembling the thrombus? Right atrium near the opening of inferior vena cava, large mobile structure, which is the normal component of the heart. So, my dear aspirants, your time starts now. Mark the correct answer. I got an answer from Kriti Bhatt. I am waiting for others to reply. Question number 8. Okay, so only Kriti Bhatt has given the right answer. What about others? What about others, my dear aspirants? Please mark the correct answer. So, I got an answer from Devnath. It's B, Eustachian. Okay, Eustachian valve. So, two of the answers coming in Eustachian valve. Okay. Okay, I got an answer from Saba A, tricuspid valve. So, let me give the right answer now. 30 seconds ho gaya. So, let us proceed with the right answer. The correct answer is Ustachian valve, my dear aspirants. Ustachian valve is the correct answer. Okay, Trupti A. Uh, Ustachian valve is the correct answer. Actually, this MCQ is targeting the valve of inferior vena cava and identify, we have to know the valve. So, the valve of inferior vena cava, which is rudimentary in nature, is Ustachian valve. So, we have got Ustachian valve as the correct answer. Okay. Ustachian valve is actually a embryonic remnant and it is considered to be the valve of inferior vena cava but it is not functional. It is not a functional valve. So, my dear aspirants, the key point which was provided was inferior vena cava valve we have to identify. It is a normal anatomical structure. So, if I enlarge this diagram, my dear aspirants, okay, if I am enlarging this diagram, see here, slight enlarge. 
So yes, what you can see here, this is the opening of inferior vena cava, this is the inferior vena cava and this structure which you are seeing here is the showing you the valve of inferior vena cava. So close to inferior vena cava, we have got a rudimentary valve of inferior vena cava. Now other, so this was the correct answer, no doubt. Now what are the incorrect options? So tricuspid valve can never be the right answer. Why? Because we know that tricuspid valve is located between, actually it is a valve which is located between the right atrium and the left ventricle. Tricuspid valve is a valve of right atrioventricular orifice. It is a valve of right atrioventricular orifice. Okay, and the location is tricuspid valve. So here you can see the location of tricuspid valve which is forming a communication between, so there it is forming a communication between, uh, it is forming a communication for right atrium and that of the right ventricle. It's, it is the valve which is located here and this is exactly uh, the valve for the tricuspid valve which is also called as right atrioventricular uh, orifice valve okay and location of the valve is slightly uh, inferior to the location of the valve of inferior vena cava and let's move on to the next so tibetian valve the other option was tibetian valve actually this tibetian valve is a semilunar fold it is a semilunar fold of the orifice of coronary sinus what is coronary sinus all the veins important veins are drains into coronary sinus these are the veins of right atrium so if i and last the diagram I can show you the Tibetian valve also. Tibetian valve is the valve of coronary sinus. So opening of coronary sinus has been shown and close to it we have got the valve. So see here. So small uh, I will use green color for it. So can you see this structure? So this small structure which you are seeing here is exactly the valve of coronary sinus which is called as Tibetian valve. Which is called as Tibetian valve. Okay. So such a brighter color which I use, this is the valve, okay, close to the opening of coronary sinus. Now, let's move on to the next. So I would also like to show you an another diagram, which is the cadaveric image. And in this cadaveric image, what you can see, this small semilunar fold, which you are seeing is the, uh, is the Tibetian valve. So it is like this opening, which you are seeing, this opening, which you are seeing. If I talk about this opening, which you are seeing, this is the opening for the coronary sinus so this is the opening for coronary sinus so this is the opening for coronary sinus and it is having a valvular structure this valvular structure which you are seeing is the thebaceian valve so this is the cadaveric image very nicely you can appreciate here that is the thebaceian valve as a opening for the coronary sinus this is the opening of cs coronary sinus done now the other uh, important uh, uh, incorrect option which was given was fossa ovalis. So actually, fossa ovalis is the remnant. So we know that fossa ovalis, we know that interarterial septum is formed by septum primum and septum secundum. And fossa ovalis is the remnant of septum primum in the interarterial septum. So I would like to show you the interior of the atrium. And here the oval fossa which you are seeing here, this fossa. This is exactly the fossa ovalis. What is it? This is exactly the fossa ovalis and actually uh, upper part of it is called as limbus fossa ovalis. These are remnant of the septum primum and septum secundum. So these are not the correct answer. So now important uh, uh, option which was provided, we have seen the location of all these structure. Now let's move on to the next MCQ that is question number 9th. Okay. Let's move on to the next question number nine. Okay, question number nine. A 39 year old man is admitted to the hospital with odanophagia. Barium sallow reveals an esophageal constriction is occurring at the level of the diaphragm. A CT scan and a biopsy is further indicated. Okay, for the presence of esophageal cancer, so which of the following lymph node will most likely will be affected first? So you can see here, options provided are posterior mediastinal and left gastric bronchopulmonary tracheobronchial inferior tracheobronchial and superior tracheobronchial so the key point for marking the correct answer is the level of the constriction so it is esophageal constriction the level is esophageal constriction that means you have to know about the lymphatic drainage of the esophagus 
and it is the lower part of esophagus so at this the biopsy has to be taken so which of the following lymph node will most likely affect it first okay so yes my dear aspirants mark the correct answer your time starts now so location esophageal constriction at the level of diaphragm is lower most part of the esophagus is involved by esophageal cancer so which lymph node is affected first so this is an mcq targeting the lymphatic drainage of esophagus your time starts now mark the correct answer question number 9th So mixed bundle of answers are coming up. Okay, so no, uh, Saini, Devnath, Mulai, and Trupti all has given the uh, given the answer as A. So let me tell you about the correct answer. The correct answer is A, my dear aspirants. So actually, lower part of the esophagus lymphatic drainage is onto the mainly left gastric and posterior mediastinal lymph node. So this MCQ here we can see the um, cancer level is onto the lower most part of the esophagus which is going towards the diaphragm opening so we will go with posterior mediastinal and the left gastric lymph node as the correct answer so my dear aspirants let me uh, give you a brief about the lymphatic drainage of upper middle and lower part of the esophagus lymph from the lowermost part of the esophagus drains into posterior mediastinal and that of left gastric lymph node so this was asked in the mcq and this is the reason we have got a as the correct answer if we talk about the middle part of the esophagus draining lymphatics, the middle part of esophagus drains lymphatics into posterior and superior mediastinal lymph node. Posterior and superior mediastinal lymph node. If we talk about the lymphatic drainage of uppermost part or upper one third of esophagus, it drains into deep cervical lymph node. Deep cervical lymph node, upper part, middle part, posterior and superior mediastinal lymph node, lowermost part of the esophagus drains into posterior mediastinal and gastric lymph node. Let's move on to the question number 10th. A 45 year old man was admitted to the hospital for elective esophageal surgery. He has been diagnosed with Barrett's esophagus and opted for surgery that could exercise uh, that could uh, that could excise the distal part of esophagus so what a structure we have to remove lower part of esophagus excise the distal part of esophagus post operatively the complaint are gradually increasing chest discomfort vitals are pulse 30, 90 beats per minute blood pressure 160 by 90 respiratory rate is 20 per minute Auscultation reveals normal heart and breath sound. A chest radiograph showed hagi opacity of the mediastinum. CT scan of the chest shows a collection in the posterior mediastinum. So which of the following structure is most likely to be damaged in this patient? The structure involved is thoracic duct, esophagus, descending thoracic aorta, agigus, vein, bronchial, lymphatics. What is the correct answer my dear aspirants? Your time begins now. So yes, I got an answer from doctor official channel. What about others? Question number 10th, I got an answer. So actually the key points I want to mention, the key points is that um, distal most part of the esophagus has to be excised and uh, these are the vitals and no opacity in the mediastinum. So chest x-ray showing opacity, showing collection of the fluid in the posterior mediastinum which is most likely affected in this condition. In the removal of distal most part of the esophagus. So I got an answer from official channel, what about others? <coughs> the correct answer is thoracic duct so official channel has given the right answer thoracic duct is absolutely uh, right answer my dear aspirants the so i in the three uh, in this diagram i would like to just give you the brief about thoracic duct uh, 
score so we know that thoracic duct originates from cisterna cali of abdomen and thereafter it will pass through the aortic hiatus the level of aortic hiatus is the t12 level of diaphragm so as you can see here this is the uh, thoracic duct as you can see from the cisterna cali it is ascending here in between the descending thoracic aorta and agigas vein so thereafter what you can see it ascends in the posterior so this posterior mediastinum was showing the opacity so see here it is going towards the posterior mediastinum and on the left hand side it is related with agigas vein and on its right hand side it is esophagus and vertebral bodies are residing on the posterior so this is about the whole relation of thoracic duct so you can see here it is related to agigas vein on the left side it is related with esophagus on to the anterior aspect and the vertebras on the posterior aspect and then it is ascending up so at the level of t5 thoracic vertebrae change it's uh, changing it is going towards more of the left hand side it is directing more onto the left hand side at the level of t4 t5 t6 thoracic duct crosses to the left posterior to esophagus and thereafter it will ascend in the superior mediastinum my dear aspirants where it is um, so at the level corresponding to c7 level c7 thora c7 cervical vertebral level what you can say that the thoracic duct is draining at the junction of two important veins that is at the junction of left internal jugular and left subclavian vein so at the junction of left internal jugular and left subclavian vein as you can see the drainage of thoracic duct has been shown so you can clearly see here the thoracic duct is draining so here the thoracic duct is draining in between the junction of these two important veins and this is the whole course of thoracic duct which has been already described so the whole course of uh, in brief the whole course of thoracic duct has been described so yes my dear aspirants so this is all the mcqs before ending the session i would like to inform you about uh, study with me anatomy test series anatomy test series uh, made by me dr mona lisa and the test is on 21st january 9 pm is the timing okay and there you can be present live you can get enrolled by using the code anat10 so you can use the code anat10 for enrolling so for enrolling to unlock and enroll so you can use this code anat10 for unlocking and enrolling in the test 9 pm 21st january exciting prizes for rank 1 2 3rd 5000 3000 and 2000 amazon vouchers are waiting for you so just uh, be present live for this session my dear aspirants and the interested student can take the subscription and they can use my code and add 10 for extra 10% discount they can use my code and add 10 for getting extra 10% discount i would also like to tell the students who want to crack all the 25000 clinical mcqs of all 19 subject based on latest pattern of exam and getting a detailed explanation for each and every mcqs so just get enrolled by using the code anat10 get an extra discount of 10% so this will provide you an additional discount of 10% my dear aspirants so on let's crack neat pg channel tomorrow also 7 pm session that is thursday Uh, so tomorrow 7 pm session day after tomorrow also so my 7 pm session will be targeting so for the next 3 uh, days i will continue the 7 pm session where i will discuss mcqs uh, targeting let's uh, tar targeting the neat pg 2022 examination so i want everyone to be present live on the sunday i will take a session on um, a special class so on the sunday i will take a session on special free platform of an academy so you can unlock the code as an at 10 and you can be present live for the session all the links of my special free session is shared on let's crack neat pg telegram group and on academy group of telegram so you can join the group and you can get the link of all my youtube sessions my sessions on the future doctor of an academy youtube channel my session on let's crack neat pg youtube channel my sessions on special free platform of an academy so you and the in the initial part i have shown you all the upcoming uh, batches and plus course interested students should join by using the code anat and they can get an extra discount of 10% so just grab this opportunity before ending the session i would also like to tell them thank you all the best keep studying and uh, do like subscribe and share let's crack neat pg platform on the you can also download the 
notes uh, if you are attending the session live on the Anacademy platform and use the code ANAT10 for availing the opportunity for 10% discount and also for unlocking the free sessions on the Anacademy platform. All the best, keep studying, thank you so much. Let's meet tomorrow exactly for the new session, 7 p.m. is the timing. All the best, keep studying. Thank you, my dear aspirants. Thank you.